I think we're in a really exciting era for um, treating patients with AML, particularly the older population with this approval. We have a great combination of drugs that in the VRLEA study showed excellent uh, uh, overall survival and event-free survival, which essentially doubled the responses to uh, monotherapy with azacitidine alone. And so it, con considering that previously we were in an area where we had very limited drug options for older patients, patients unsuitable for intensive chemotherapy, treating them with hydroxycarbamide or low-dose cytarabine. We're now able to give them a, a great novel combination of treatments that's really having direct impact on, uh, on their ability to survive AML for longer. And I think the tolerability of the treatment is, is pretty good. And obviously there are some caveats with that, but um, you know, we're seeing more and more patients being treated on this combination and tolerable rating it well. So I think um, the recent NICE approval is fantastic news. I think the, the things for people to be aware is that the approval is slightly different from what was the COVID allowance for um, venetoclax and azacitidine in that this is really specifically for those patients who are unsuitable for intensive chemotherapy. Um, and I think as time goes on, we're really starting to understand more about how these agents work. So, um, th and that means really which patients um, may be more or less likely to respond. And I think um, we're gaining more insight into the impact of mutational profile, for example. So we know that patients who have NPM1 mutation, IDH1, IDH2 mutations may respond better to a venetoclax and azacitidine combination. Whereas there are certain um, mutational profiles such as P53 mutated AML, um, who may be less likely to respond. And we're starting to see uh, mutational profiles that uh, associate with uh, secondary resistance or relapse. Um, and so I think we will learn more and more about these agents and, and also about the depth of remission that you may get. So where does MRD fit into um, the use of these agents? Again, something that wasn't really part of our, our um, landscape of management for patients with older of, of older patients with AML. So I think it's fantastic that we're seeing sort of this great uh, real sort of frame shift in the way that we're able to treat our older patients with AML.